can speak uh, loudly and the microphone will be going to one sound. Okay. This meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law. This meeting of Monday, November 1st, 2021, was included in the list of meetings published in the current news installment. <coughs> notice of this meeting was placed on the Bolton Water Borough Hall. In addition, a copy of this notice is available to the public. And a copy of this statement shall be included in the minutes of this meeting. Mayor Dennis Sullivan. Here. Council members, Granville Brady. Here. Jane Cabuda. Here. Tom Mitchell. Here. Randy Pitts. Here. Roger Broom. Here. Greg Weed. Here. All right, please stand and have a seat to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Although our agenda calls for one of the for the passing of the Reverend St. Webster, we actually did that at our last meeting, but I would like to uh, remind the public there is a memorial service scheduled for Reverend Webster. We're trying to you know, confirm the date, time, and place. The preliminary indications are this Saturday, the, um, I guess that would be the, uh, the sixth time and place to be determined. We'll try to get that out on the borough website as soon as we have a confirmation. I, I believe that it will be at the church, ma'am. It will be at Charlotte. Uh, well, let's, we'll put out when we have the, the final determination. Uh, as I mentioned last time, a life well lived, a family of service to this borough that goes back probably most of the 20th century. So well, uh, you know, I've left a big mark. And I hope, you know, if, if you're around, you can participate uh, in, in that service. But we have filling the departmental report. This is our election day notice tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Early voting is done. Mail-in ballots are due tomorrow by the close of the poll. So. Please exercise your, one of your most important civic duties, rights, and responsibilities by voting tomorrow. Committee reports, I'll start to my far right with Councilman Mitchell. Okay, uh, Mayor. Uh, first of all, the engine company building needs a new roof, assuming we want to keep the building. Uh, because, of course, the engine company is going to be moving out and there's a new uh, uh, building that's being built on down Banana. If we do want to keep the building, we, can, we, we would need a new roof and would cost about $70,000. New Jersey Transit has awarded a contract to replace the portal bridge over the Hackensack River between Newark Penn Station and New York City. This will eliminate many uh, commuter delays uh, that people have been experiencing uh, on, on our lives. The Historic Advisory Committee has proposed that we erect memorials to the two policemen who died in the line of duty. Each memorial would be close to the place where the officer was shot. Officer Manning Crow was shot when he surprised three burglars at a butcher shop on South Street in 1899. Officer Julius Souter was shot and killed after coming across a man who was about to commit suicide in 1917. And finally, I was honored to accompany the mayor to the county commissioner's meeting, or freeholders' meeting, on Tuesday, past Tuesday, when we were presented with a grant of $124,031 to restore the eastern portico on Pearl Hall. We'll pass that give this to our finance chairman and see if he can find a uh, light deposit that's still big enough to uh, <laughs> and, and as, as Tom, as you My said, my name is not on it. No, no. And, right, and rightly so. Thank you. Um, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of resources in rehabilitating you know, Borough Hall, not as a museum, but as a open, working public building. First impression you get walking in, is the entry is a little tired, and I think that this this should cover most, if not all of the uh, repairs and, and replacement of the stairway, painting, scraping, probably the handrail as well, bringing everything up to code. Uh, they say you get only one chance to make a first impression. When this is done, the outside of the building will match the inside. So, well done. 
the SCAR committee, and uh, we look forward to future submissions and, and future support, not only from the state, but from the county as well. It's money we don't have to dig into our own budget for, and it's, it's, uh, it will be well spent. That's it, Tom? That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilwoman Kavona. I have no report this evening. Thank you. Councilman uh, Pitts. I have no report. Councilman Grove. I have no report this evening. Councilman Grady. Yeah, I don't want to sound like a record, so I do have a report to for this evening. The Finance Department began the 2022 budget uh, on Friday. The budget will present more challenges. Since not only do we have to look at capital and operating, we also have to look at reconciling some of the financial uh, issues that were a uh, result of damage in tropical storm either. We continue to expand and we're also looking at staff deployment. And the budget will add a new public information officer, thanks to the efforts of Council President Weeds. Our cash flow remains good. We collect about 98% of our taxes. And the October 27th uh, tax lien sale report showed we collected $867,300 in premiums and sold one with a percentage point of 18%. All the liens were sold to outside lien holders and there were a total of nine successful bidders. We have an ordinance to purchase a new fire truck. If past history holds true, we could expect the truck to be delivered in about two years and hopefully the supply chain issues will be resolved by then. I tried to order one from Carvana, but they were all out. Uh, as far as redevelopment's concerned, another set of ordinances we have tonight deals with rezoning the garden apartments, garden apartments. And thanks to the amazingly fast work of the redevelopment committee, council's considering a plan that would mitigate future flooding that we have in tropical storm either. I'm really grateful for our redevelopment committee, members Brady Novato, Mike Curlin, Tom Mitchell, Colin Driver, and to you, Mayor, and that's my report. Thank you. Mr. President. Just really quick, um, the, the dirty uh, four-letter word is coming, snow. Uh, and uh, the, the rebid for snow plowing um, will be later this month. Uh, so we are working hard to get that ready to go when uh, when it inevitably does come. Uh, and finally, um, we are working on getting the curbs on Fairmont and Grant Avenue. Uh, we're working on getting those bids. Uh, those are two streets that really need uh, recurbing badly. Uh, so that we're working on that. And also, as you see, there's plenty of uh, road construction, especially with getting new pipes in town. Uh, we are working on that, uh, and then uh, once the pipes get put in, it takes a little while for it to settle, make sure everything's right, and then, uh, then the roads will be paved. And that's all I have. Thank you. I just have a very brief report of piggybacking on what the President just said. Uh, I don't get a lot of mail for a whole, but I, I got a very nice piece the other day from DOT. It included an award for Kevin, what was it, $380,000? $80,000 in road and curb repairs, and I, I, I don't want to misspeak the exact roads, but they were roads that we have identified as roads in need, and I'll, I'll try to get those details uh, at our next meeting. So we will be getting a substantial amount of DOT money, and it's just gratifying that, you know, for years we sent money to Washington and money to Trenton, and it was uh, mostly a one-way faucet and it was draining out of the town. We've had pretty good rapport, pretty good relationships now with, with the elected officials in Washington and Trenton that represent us. We're starting to get some infrastructure money back. We're getting money to, to clean up the landfill. We're getting DOT money. And uh, I'm, I'm you know, pleased to report it'll be, again, not much less that we have to take out of local call. There will be, in, in some cases, a, a supplement that we have to come up with on our own, but every dollar we can raise through outside funding is one less dollar that I have to ask the, the Finance Committee to find. Every $11, uh, every $50,000 we spend costs the average taxpayer $11. And I don't believe that number has changed over the years. It's, it's sort of the number we've always used. So, you know, $100,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's $22 for that one item. And then another hundred thousand, and another hundred thousand, and it's a death by 
to death by a thousand pennies. So uh, we're aggressive in pursuing grants. We don't get 100 percent, but we're we're, we're we're pests about keeping you know keeping the, the the heat turned on to get what we feel is our fair share. I'm glad to announce we've got some more grant money coming in, and it'd be up to us to use it wisely so that uh, you know we we are in line for future awards as well. Last thing I, I have a very very uh, very quick very mundane uh, but important. I've gotten uh, multiple uh, calls from people on the west side of town wondering where the new recycling bins are. Uh, when the county went to the new recycling method of pickup about two years ago, about a half of the town got the new bins. And uh, the thinking at that time was that each town in the county would get about half of the town done. I didn't see the, the, myself didn't see the wisdom in that, but that was not my decision. So I've been getting calls from people from, I guess, uh, Bridge Street West about, you know, where are our bins. I had a, a, a long and involved conversation with Head of County Recycling the other day, and they can't get the new bins on service till they have enough trucks. And they can't get enough trucks because of the supply chain. So. I don't know whether those bins are sitting somewhere or they're just not here yet, but until they get the trucks with the arms that can pick them up, folks, if, if you still have an old round blue top, you're going to have to just use it through the winter until we can announce that, that the new ones are here. I know it's not the answer you want to hear, but they're still picking up recycling. If you have problems getting your recycling picked up, I'll call Mr. Hadley at the Public Works Department. He's our recycling coordinator. If you can't reach him, call Kevin or myself. Your recycling will be picked up twice a month. It just may be picked up the old-fashioned way for a little while longer. And that's all I have for my committee. One proclamation, and I'm, I'm glad that Mr. and Mrs. Blue are here tonight, and I'd like to call uh, both of you up if you would like to come. Oh, I see Mrs. Willard has left us, so. No, she's here. So come on up. Occasionally, I, I get to do something uh, important, significant, and fun at the same time. Uh, we've had lots of proclamations over the years for uh, events and people and, and accomplishments. And I have one tonight. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Willard are here proclaiming November. As, a Native, as Native American Heritage Month in the borough of Somerville. Whereas on August 3, 1990, George H.W. Bush declared the month of November as National American Indian Heritage Month, commonly referred to as Native American Heritage Month. And whereas the bill read in part, quote, the president has authorized and requested to call upon the federal, state, and local governments, groups, and organizations and the people of the United States to observe each month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities, close quote. And whereas this landmark bill honoring America's tribal people aims at providing a platform to share culture, traditions, crafts, dance, and concepts of life. And whereas the commemorative month of November enables the opportunity to learn about Native American heritage and provides an opportunity to educate federal, state, county and local officials about the concerns and history of Native American Indians. We should all join them in recognizing the critical role that Native Americans played in the vitality of our country. Whereas Harold and Linda Willard, <coughs> residents of the Somerville Borough, have become strong advocates for recognizing Native American Indian culture. Now therefore be proclaimed that I, Dennis Sullivan, mayor of the Borough of Somerville, along with the Borough Council, here I proclaim November as Native American Heritage Month in the borough of Somerville and urge all residents to recognize the story legacy of Native Americans in our nation. Signed by myself and Kevin Sluka, our clerk, 11-1-2021. Mr. and Mrs. Willard, I present this to you for display proudly in relation in recognition of your heritage and our own. Thank you. Would, would you like the floor for a minute? I would love you to, to, to speak on, on your behalf. Okay. <clears throat> um, my name is Harold Willard. I am Catawba Indian. I am of the Catawba Indian Nation of Caldwell, Ohio, Appalachian Tribe. Matt Sullivan, 
council members, and the people of Somerville, New Jersey, on behalf of First Nation Peoples of America, I want to thank you for this proclamation designating November as Native American Heritage Month in Somerville, New Jersey. Thank you. I would like to add that uh, Mr. Willard is a, a proud veteran of, of the U.S. Navy. Um, and I will see you hopefully at the Veterans Service on the 11th. Yeah. At 11? Oh, definitely. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Ma'am. As with a lot of proclamations, um, it, it's important to break down stereotypes and, and, and change the way we look at you know, our history and ourselves. Uh, many of you at the table, uh, especially to the gentleman to my left, remember the, the Saturday afternoon westerns with the, with the awful stereotypes of you know, the, the, the violent and hated you know, red man and, and the, the circled wagons and the, I mean, and the, and the, the hoops and the tomahawks. And it's, I mean, I, I think we've come a long way. There's still a long way to go. There just still is. How many of you remember F Troop? Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, when you're 10 years old, it seemed funny. But looking back, I cringe to think that, you know, I, I, I admit to have, having watched that. Um, you know, history's not always pretty. It's not always what you read in the books. But I, I think over time, uh, our, our society and our schools are, are starting to look at you know, how we teach history, how we portray you know, each other's culture. And uh, there's a lot to be learned from the past so we don't repeat those mistakes. So, Mr. Willard, again, on, on, on behalf of the governing body, uh, let's have a fantastic month of education and awareness. All right. Now yeah, back to the regular business of the borough. Um, the, the impact of the storm that hit us, uh, is it two months already? It's two months today? Yeah, it's two months today. Um, shown, a, shown a light on, on land use, um, the, the, the pros and cons of our current land use. Our garden apartment districts were probably zoned probably in the 1940s as, as a result of the, the returning GIs needing housing. Probably at that time, and, and I, none of us were old enough to remember, there probably was not a lot of housing choice in the, in the borough except for single and two-family homes. So there was some vacant land and it, it was, there was a need for housing. And as a result, our garden apartment districts were created, were built, and, uh, and have been in use for 80 years, but the, the events of two months ago uh, brought it home to us that not only is the climate changing, but land use patterns have to change as well. Our redevelopment committee met uh, and, and some ideas around examining the current you know, garden apartment zones that we have and looking forward to what can we do uh, if and when we ultimately rebuild, what can we do to mitigate uh, the impacts that, that will happen. We're not going to stop the water from coming, but we can, we can hopefully do something to make sure that what is built and where it's built makes sense. And that's basically the, the, the genesis of our discussion for tonight. Um, Kevin, you want to lead off with uh, either Mr. Novato or Mr. Driver to, to give us uh, you know, how we got to this point? Sure. Bernie, would you feel comfortable in, in starting? Sure. I'll introduce Bernie Novato, our 30-year chairman of the planning board. Are we in, running, yeah, running about, about that. that around that point? And of course. Bernie also sits on the county planning board. No one is, no one is more knowledgeable um, uh, about land use in this town than Mr. Novato. Well, so, Bernie, the floor is yours. Thank you. What we have done is, in conjunction with 
the owner of the Brookside complex, which includes the Cliff Street apartments, is construct a plan that will get the residents out of the water, get the apartments out of the water, provide emergency service access to any buildings that are in the flood hazard area, get modern buildings with sprinkler systems, and, and the owner has a track record here. And he puts in commercial sprinkler systems, puts in generators. We're going to have safe buildings. We're going to have buildings with access to dry land, high ground. And he's going to provide a, a, a component, an affordable component. <coughs> This is the plan. This is probably as as proud of what we have done over the last 30 years as we are. As proud as we are of that, this is the most significant thing we've done. This zoning is, this isn't the approval of buildings. This zoning change is going to allow these buildings to exist. It's going to allow the owner who's willing to do it to rebuild it. It's, it's, it's where we need to go. So that's, I don't know. Yeah, I'd like Mr. Jarry to give, you know, a little bit more of the background I, I like as well. Stay and then and you can't, you're not going to match Mr. Navarro's passion, I know. And, oh, I right. can. That's and, no problem. And that, uh, I mean, just so counsel can do it as well. In terms yeah. of the, sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts, the A to C, and then we can do yeah. I mean, questions. But what Bernie about. said is, is accurate, and there's very little that I can add. The, the part I'm going to add is that the owner of, of, of the properties approached you, Mr. Mayor, and said, I want to rebuild, but you've got to help me and, and put zoning in place that allows me to rebuild safely, quickly, and keep my apartments and my tenants out of water long term. These apartments were built in the 30s, as you said. The current garden zone um, zoning was written after they were built, so none of them conformed with the zoning anyhow. Um, there, there's been much discussion over the years on how, how do we treat um, workforce housing and we've convinced the owner that he should provide workforce <coughs> housing and he will do so. That workforce is a nice name for more affordable housing than um, others. So that overall, and, and what Bernie uh, alluded to, <coughs> one of the things that we will be insisting on is an emergency recovery plan in these places. Um, we, we started some some years ago as, as the first community in the state to require an emergency management plan from any new construction, multi-family construction. We're going a step further with this one and we'll be requesting an emergency recovery plan, i.e. Um, in those areas which are flood prone, um, a way to get out of the building without having to go through the water, a way of getting into the building without having to go into the water, and, if, and other things. Now, there'll be generators, there'll, there'll be elevators, whatever is required um, to bring it up to current code. <coughs> but um, we were also charged by the mayor and the redevelopment committee to develop a series of zoning or a zoning plan quickly. And we, we've managed to pull this off in, in about three and a half, four weeks. And I think they're very thorough. Um, the property owner agrees with them. And uh, we'd like you to introduce them tonight so we can go to the planning board for their input and come back um, later in the month for adoption. That's all I've got. Thank you. So what I'd like to do is um, just okay. go around the table if you have specific questions. Again, council, remember, <coughs> the way the school operates, we'll call, at, at that point in the meeting, we'll call for a motion to introduce um, the motion of the vote will be taken to introduce the ordinance 
if it passes the introductory phase, it will go to the planning board for their uh, examination next Wednesday, the 10th. It will be an open hearing. Uh, it will be on their agenda, at which point the public will be allowed to come and comment. The planning board will then deliberate the, the merits of the plan as, as the ordinance introduces it. If they choose to make corrections to it, it will come back to us. And those that, that that the changes will be then incorporated for our meeting on the fifteenth, and that will be the ordinance. We'll have the public hearing at that point, and the final vote on that ordinance, which may be the same one as we're introducing tonight, depending on what we hear back from the planning board. And the planning board's recommendations are just that; they are um, recommendations that we can either incorporate. Or, or not, depending on what you know, how we how we see. So that's that's the time frame and a little bit about how it will work. And I start to my far left with Mr. Fitz for any questions. We don't need so much comment because we'll have plenty of comment at the public hearing on the fifteenth. Just questions that you might have prior to um, the call for an introduction later on. Mr. Grove. I have, I have no questions and thank you both for speaking on behalf of these uh, resolutions. Appreciate it. Uh, Mrs. Kubota. As a former resident of the Southbridge Gardens and uh, having to move my car many times because the parking lot and the pool flooded, um, I think it's a great thing. I mean, and we have to take care of the people that live in the apartments. I spent a lot of years uh, rescuing my car from a parking lot, so thank you. I'm uh, a little bit out of order, and since uh, Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Brady were on the redevelopment committee, I'll let Mr. President I'll put the floor open for you for questions. Yeah, I just have a few quick questions. I uh, want to thank you for uh, setting this up. Um, you asked me a few questions. I had uh, spoken to Colin a few times. I just want to get some of those answers out in the public. Um, uh, number one, uh, would studio apartments, will studio apartments be uh, a part of this plan? No. I know the answer is, I'm just making mm -hmm. sure that the public knows. Mm -hmm. There'll be a mix of studios, ones and twos. No threes. And I think that's important. That's consistent with what our other redevelopment plans have called for. Um, threes can become overcrowded. They're going to be, they're going to be ones and zero studios, ones and twos. Uh, the affordable housing component. Will it be required under these ordinances to have them uh, with these uh, with these particular units, the the, the ordinances as as they are written now require that an affordable component will be built built within the properties currently owned by the owner, which means it may not be every building that has an affordable component, but there will be an affordable component within the, the zone. Uh, what kind of studies uh, have been done for the evacuation route? None. <laughs> they will form part of the application. Now, we, we know um, from history and, and, and living in town the, the best act evacuation routes, but the type, style, and how it is constructed will be part of the site plan application. And were Mr. Morris's tenants, especially over on Cliff Street, able to give input uh, on these ordinances? No, they, they, they weren't invited to. The charge given to us was come up with an ordinance which provides high and dry accommodation <coughs> to replace what has been lost. Okay, um, that's, that's fine. Then I, um, I certainly hope uh, that if they have any questions, concerns, or input uh, into this, that they be invited to the next council meeting. And, 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 this is, and like I said before, the, note, the, uh, the November 10th planning board meeting will have this uh, for an open discussion. The public will be perfect. Right. So perfect. they'll have input at the planning board level as they develop their recommendations, and then they'll be part of the just discussion. If, if, if I may, yes. Yes. Just, just, just bear in mind that this zoning doesn't design a development. It'll, it sets the, the, the guidelines for a builder to come in and to design a project. Therefore, all we're doing is setting up the parameters. We, we can't say what goes in the building yet. That's part of the site plan, which and is in the future. 
I just want to make sure the public is aware of it is all. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell, as a member of the redevelopment committee, do you have yeah. any questions? Yeah, uh, just pr procedurally, uh, you covered part of this already, but uh, is, is there going to be a clear explanation in layman's terms so that people who come to the planning board meeting will understand what is being proposed? I, I, Bernie, do you want to answer that one? I think I, if, if you've read the ordinances that are being proposed, they are in relatively plain language and they're, they're they're pretty short. Yeah. They're not hard to read. Understandable. Yeah. And and they're also short. Each one is is two pages. Yeah. And aside from some of the bulk standards where there might be some differences and and uh, let me let me go into a little more detail the r4 zone is south of brookside avenue and across mountain avenue into oak terrace those are all properties that flood the requirement for new construction is that there be access to property that's, that's not in the flood hazard area. It's, it's dry ground. The, the properties that are in between Brown Street and, and Orchard Street don't flood. And there's no reason to rebuild them. They need to be rehabbed. And that's the plan for where the affordable housing is going to go. Glen Street Apartments go underwater on a regular basis. <coughs> go underwater to the first floor, up, up through the first floor, three times in the last 18 years. It makes no sense to rebuild them the way they are. The owner of those properties, which is the owner of all of this, owns an access point on the Grove Street. He's going to build a bridge, a pedestrian bridge, to get to Grove Street, to get out, to get in. Ambulances and the fire department will be able to get in there. It's, it's something that hasn't been contemplated in the last 35 years. And and now we're thinking about doing that. And all of those ordinances are written so that they're understandable. They're, they're simple. It's not complicated. People can read it and say, OK, so we're talking about a front yard setback of X. What does that mean? We're talking about a building height of X. What does that mean? What is that going to look like? When we get to, to the site plan stage, we're going to be able to see that. We can't see it now. We're just enabling it. We still have to get to the site plan stage where the owner comes in and says, this is what I propose to do, and this is what it's going to look like. This is the same process we use when, when we redevelop the shopping center downtown. We sat down with the owner, and we said, what do you need? This is what we need. Let's work it out. And that's what's going on right now. And there's a lot to come in the future. There's going to be a site plan. There's going to be a, a, a developer's agreement. And a lot of the details are going to be looked at at that point. What we needed to do was take some action to 
at least begin to prevent the damage that, that has taken place. And it's, I mean, I, my earliest memory of significant damage to these apartments was 50 years ago. For 50 years they've been flooded. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's time to do it. And we've, we've tried to write the ordinances and, and we work with the owner's planner to write this. And we tried to write it in the simplest language we could so that it's understandable. And, and there are going to be two other opportunities one at the planning board and the next one on the 15th of November, right here, for comment. But we don't, we don't have an application yet. All we have is, is saying, this is what we're going to allow. And it's, it's time for us to do it. Tom, does that answer your question? It's certainly done. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. If, if, if you're coming next, the next meeting to looking for a model, we won't have that yet. That will be you know, right. down the road. But as Bernie said, this will put in place what can be designed so that the owner has a template from which to work. Right. Mr. Craig. Just a statement. Uh, Your Honor, I know that there are some members of the governing body that were concerned that they felt they didn't have a blueprint for this. You created the redevelopment committee to do that work. It's a working committee. We come up with a recommendation that we feel is really pretty good. It's really an opportunity for the planning board and the borough council to have the kind of synergy that we need for all projects in town. We have to work together and not against each other. Bernie came up with some great ideas. It's a matter for us to light that fuse, which will then go back to his, to his uh, planning board, and that's where it will explode. Everybody will see exactly what it is, have questions and answers. They're the experts that are going to help develop the plan that we're going to approve. So it's that kind of synergy, I think, that makes us a model for certainly the county, maybe for the state. We all work together. And I would hope that you uh, not, not matter, forgive us. You have to understand. That's the process we use. It's working. I think we continue, continue to work with that. Right. Let's go ahead then. And we'll take this individual and I'll have a brief comment at the end. First ordinance for introductions, 2651-21-1101, amending chapter 102, land use and development article 11. Zoning 102, creating R5 Townhouse Apartment Residential District Block 143.01, Lots 1 and 8, Block 101, Lots 1 and 3, Block 147, Lot 1. Okay. Motion for so introduction. Second. Roll call. Grandma Brady? Yes. Jane Caputa? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Broome? Yes. Brad Weed? Yes. All right, second ordinance, 2652-21-1101. Amending Chapter 102, Land Use and Development, Article 11, Zoning 102, creating an R6 townhouse apartment residential district on Block 102, Lot 8, and Block 105, Lot 10. Motion for introduction. So moved. Second. Roll call. Council members Graham O'Brady, yes. Dan Cavuda, yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Randy Pitts, yes. Roger Broome, yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Ordinance 2653-21-1101, amending Chapter 102, Land Use and Development, Article 11, Zoning 102, creating an R4 townhouse apartment residential district, Block 143, Lots 1 and 2, Block 153, Lots 3, 4, 16, 4 4.17, 4.18, 4.19, 4.20, and 4.21. Motion. Second. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Jane Cabuda? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Broome? Yes. Fred Weave? Yes. And the last of the four, Ordinance 2654 21 -1101, amending Chapter 102, Land Use and Development, Article 11, Zoning 102, creating an R7 townhouse apartment residential district, Block 71, Lot 6 and 15. Motion for introduction. I'll move. Second. 
Council members Grandpa Brady. Yes. Jane Cavuda. Yes. Paul Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Kevin, would you please, when you pass this on to uh, the planning board for their discussion on the 10th, uh, make sure that the maps that delineate these specific zones are included in that? Sure. For the record, Your Honor, when is the planning board meeting? Wednesday, uh, the 10th of November, in this room at 7 p.m. Yeah, if they can just have their comments returned quickly because the 11th is a holiday. So time-wise, you're, you're extremely tight. All right, we have only to the ordinance, sir. We have two more ordinances. Whoa, okay. Since we're, all right, we have two ordinances that have had their introduction and we're up for public hearing and adoption. First, 2649-21-1018. Establishing a salary range for certain officials. I need a motion to open public session. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady. Yes. Jane Cavuda. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Public hearing. Hearing none. Motion to close. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady. Yes. Jane Cavuda. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Second ordinance up for it. Uh, adoption 2650. I, I would, I would oh. move to adopt the uh, ordinance. Okay. I, I was going to read it, but go ahead. It's a yeah, new We already we, we closed the public oh, session. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm jumping. All right. So I need a motion for adoption. Someone move to my second. All right. Roll call. Council members Grandpa Brady. Yes. Jane Cabuda. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. All right. Our next. Ordinance for adoption 2650-211018, a bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $800,000 for acquisition of a fire truck for by the borough of Somerville in the county of Somerset, New Jersey, and authorizing the issuance of $760,000 in bonds or notes of the borough for financing part of the appropriation. Motion for public hearing. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady. Jane Caboose, yes. Tom Mitchell, Randy Pitts, yes. Roger Broom, yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Public hearing on the fire engine. Hearing none, motion to close. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady, yes. Jane Caboose, yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Randy Pitts, yes. Roger Broom, yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Motion for adoption of say. So moved. Second. Second. I just want to make a little comment. Go ahead, Tom, real quick. Uh, I just want to comment that this is to replace uh, engine number one. The old engine number one was beyond its uh, rated lifespan, which was basically had been used up. It uh, it was still be, still being used, but it was damaged while uh, conducting a rescue during Hurricane Ida, and. Uh, has been temporarily replaced by another one from a from a uh, nearby town, which is also uh, beyond its useful lifespan. So this is why we have to buy a new engine. And I'll just say it's, it's fitting that engine one, its last call was was one of rescue, and it it served us well. And it's a shame it had to go, but it it it, it went doing its job. All right, Councilman. Let's roll, let's vote on the ordinance. Council members, Grandpa Brady? Yes. Jane Cavuda? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Broom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. All right. And I'm jumping backwards, which I should have done before, but I was anxious to get those ordinances introduced. We have a rep representative from Pumpkin Homes tonight, and very briefly, we had to do a road change in the new project south of the railroad tracks because of bureaucracy <coughs> we don't have time to go into. But it has to do with the U.S. Postal Service, and that I think should be sufficient to uh, to explain why we have to have a public discussion. We have to change the name on our road to make mail deliverable. I don't have time to go into all the details, but I would uh, like to introduce. Yeah. Excuse me. I would I would prefer that this we open the meeting to the public and we hear that during the public session procedurally. Um, I move to open uh, the meeting to the public. That's your prerogative. We have a okay. second. Tom second. All right. We have a roll call. Open the meeting to the public. Granville Brady. Council members yes. Granville Brady. Yes. Jane Cavuda. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. That's fine. Okay. So then our first 
item for open. I'll let right. you do I'll, I'll, I'll do the oh. setup if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I have with me uh, Mr. Jim Mullen. He's got the fancy title of Director of Land and Title for Pulte Home. Uh, what has transpired over the last, um, let's say, 10 months is uh, the filing of all the street names for the Pulte and Avalon Bay redevelopment near the station. With, with both the uh, tax assessor and with the United States Post Office. Uh, part of that um, filing requires a, a letter of support from the borough, which is handled by the uh, clerk, um, which has been done. There's been no negative feedback at all from the post office. Um, we got into a discussion, oh, Kevin got into a discussion with the post office last week because certain people who are already resident in the bulky townhouses are not getting money. And it was determined that um, within the, the, the post office system, you cannot have two streets with the same name and the same zip code, which is rather bizarre because I'm sure it happens, but that's a little sideline for me. There is a station road in Branchburg, 08876, which means that we don't know where the mail is. to branch up that in a minute. Um, the simplest fix seems resolution hopefully to council on the 15th to calling it something like Station Road East so that the people that have got their credit card bills changed and their bank accounts changed and everything already reflecting Station Road don't go through the trauma of having this stuff lost. So having said that, because that's all I want to say, Jim, do you want to have a quick discussion? Yeah, just a <laughs> name and address for our public record, if you uh, want, sir. Good evening, Mr. May and uh, council members for the record. My name is James Mullen. I'm actually an attorney, licensed in the state of New Jersey, but also uh, an employee of Pulley Homes, the Northeast Quarter Division here in uh, Somerset County. Um, and as you know, Mr. Driver said, uh, I'm really here tonight on behalf of our homeowners, who we have 12 homeowners already in their homes there. And that's how we discovered it. They came to our sales manager and said, you know, why are we getting mail? And couldn't understand it. Uh, you know, and our um, organization had delivered to the post office in December of last year, my assistant and our construction consultant had delivered plans and an address list to say, here's the street name, any problems, and, and nothing. We didn't hear anything back, try again, to, you know, continuously over the time frame to get the feedback. And, and nothing. And I have to say, in other communities, it's not just Somerville. We've had this happen in a lot of places where there's just no response over time. And so, but eventually, you know, you, you get it done. Uh, but as Mr. Driver said, the, the, the problem is now these homeowners are there. They have these addresses. They sent out change of address addresses to their lenders, you know, to their uh, driver's license, all different kinds of things. So we do want to try to keep it as close to this as possible to, to the least amount of. Um, or change, and I do offer you know to go to the post office with you, maybe with uh, your clerk, if possible, and, and try to uh, get an expeditious uh, resolution to this, and something that's simple, you know, for the borough and for our residents. So that's really my goal. To that, but you know, I'm asking for your help in that regard. Kevin, have you had any interaction with the postmaster? Yeah. yeah. So they're they're pretty yeah they're pretty adamant. Um, it pretty much what Colin said is pretty much what happened. I went there. I did not meet with the postmaster. He was unavailable for me to meet with him. I did meet with the assistant there, um, literally by going there, you know, and waiting. And, and I met with them. And they were pretty adamant that the, the, the reason that the folks aren't getting mail is because of the, 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 uh, the fact that Station Road is, there's a Station Road in Branch Park. With the same zip shares zip the same zip code. And that, that, um, based on our <coughs> short discussions, it, it, they were not able to be flexible on for that. Um, I did speak with the, the gentleman there who was very accommodating and told me that he would bring his, uh, get in touch with the postmaster and have a further discussion on it, but he didn't think that it was, there was going to be any movement for it. He said that in their opinion, that, that's, um, that's just not something they would do. But I did not meet with the postmaster. Um, Unfortunately, I, I did miss him on a couple of occasions when I personally stopped there. So we, we could certainly make that attempt again, yes. um, see where that goes, and and uh, and address from so there. In terms of the time frame, we need to we need to move fairly quickly on this. 
Yeah, I think the next step is to, because we, we have another 12 homeowners under contract who will be closing in the next few months. So. I, I don't know if they have the ability to have post office. Like, no, obviously, they can get post office boxes. But, but obviously, Mr. Moen, those folks, you can't put a post office box on your driver's license. Right. No, no. So, so you, there are credit cards. Yeah. So, so it, it does need some expeditious uh, resolution. Could we change the name of the firm? Uh, you can. I think that you know we talked about it. I, I know some of the council members have certain feelings about that. I think Mr. Mullen's position is that you know you already have 12 families in there, and anywhere you keep it closer to where it is, it it would cause uh, a little less you know um, issue. So that's. Yes, right. exactly. I'm restating right. that. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Mr. Driver had said. You know, uh, Station Road East possibly is a, 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 an alternative that might be. My 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 concern would be the closer our our road name is to another road name elsewhere in the district, the more likely mail is going to be misdirected. I had a neighbor who lived on, I believe, South Otten. Road and until recently, uh, part of Hillsboro was in our zip code mm -hmm. and has an Otten Road. And it was accepted, I guess, because ours was South Otten and theirs was just Otten. But they all kept getting misdirected. They were constantly getting each other's mail, which was a headache because it's you know, a few miles away. It's sure. not. It's not like you got the mail with your neighbor across the street and you just walk across the street and drop it in the park. So I'm not sure that the idea of, of keeping the name very close is the best to do in the long term. And in the short term, everybody who has listed his an address as Station Road is going to have to put in a change of address form for every everybody they do business with, regardless of whether they're simply adding an E to the end of it or changing the name of the house. So that's my thought concerning the name change. And, and I also have to say, growing up, I uh, grew up on 14 Schoolhouse Lane in Somerville, New Jersey. We always got mail from 14 Schoolhouse Road, Somerset, New Jersey. Uh, and I think, my personal feeling, we've got an opportunity to change the name of the road. Uh, we have a lot of streets in town. Uh, we don't normally get to do this. We have a lot of streets in town named after people, but we don't have a lot of streets named after women or people of color. And I really think this is an opportunity that we can uh, do that. Thank you. Could I just you think we can do it? Okay, I mean, the bottom line is people are spending five, six hundred thousand dollars to live in town. They don't know or care about our history. To be perfectly honest with you, Fred, there are a lot of people who move into Somerville that think it is Somerville, Massachusetts, for example, or whatever. I really think that we need to respond to this issue more so than respond to what we feel is some kind of a, a good idea because we feel that a certain affinity to history and women. I agree with you, but this is something we have to do. So we have to set a deadline. If we don't set the deadline, then we have to say it's going to be something. Because we could drag our feet on this thing for a year. I know what and happened the last time with the historic committee. They came up with three pages of stuff, okay? You want to set a deadline, I'm willing to do it. If you don't want to set a deadline, then count me out. Well, that's East Station Road. Yeah. Deadline, yeah. I think the other thing too is that you have the post office is an integral part of this. And maybe that having a couple of names we bring to them right. with a priority and like that. And yeah. they disagree with us on the on the first one, the second one. Could could we suggest then that we come back um, on the fifteenth with a recommendation? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Tom, could you retrieve or Kevin, could you retrieve the, the list that I've got it. You have it? Oh God, do right. I have it? Right, maybe, maybe time maybe you can meet with the call and then shrink pull this down a little bit okay. and, and then come up with a couple of viable I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure if there are, are any on there that meet uh, 
Mr. Weed's criteria. Well, but maybe. I, I, I think they probably are. Yeah, there's out. other, other filtering I'll, factors. I'll, I'll throw a random thought out. We, it's possible through some sources close to me we could find some individuals who were associated with the early station and the railroad that might have a name that would maybe conform to a person you know, of, of color or a woman. In dialogue, in yeah, dialogue, we could do that quickly. Well, in dialogue with the post office, if state, if we're able to talk to them about leaving station road, is that something that is fine? And that's our preference. We could get the state. Obviously, we could make no change as an alternative. We could, if we could talk Branchburg into changing the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. You never know. Yeah. You know the only reason I asked that is because. I mean, that's that's the well, post all passively resistance. Uh, yeah, yes, it's a passive. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we should just name it Webster Place. And no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not a place. A wet, so wet, wet well, street, whatever. Well, you, you want to dig back and Kevin, look at look at that list one more time. To and we'll, see, we'll come see back to the something that might, for the recommendation. And I'll and I'll check my sources to see if we can. Come up with uh, right. one, but well, we have to do it within a two week. Yeah, and, yeah, and, not, yeah, and the post office is closed twice between now and then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For election day and yeah. Gavin's day. Kevin yeah. and Jim can get together and maybe go yeah. down and visit as, as yeah. we get closer to the fifth day. Yeah. Sure. I still like to go to court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we can prove that your family had something to do with the railway chain, <laughs> our problem is solved. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, yeah, make, that make sense? Most of those are yeah. Dutch names. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. Good. All right. We're still in open session. Is there anyone else from the public? We'd like to comment or ask questions. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to close. So move. Second. <laughs> Council members Granville Brady. Yes. Jane Cabuda. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weave. Yes. Right. We are in the consent resolution phase of our meeting. Are there any resolutions council would like full for three oh eight discussion? I'm sorry, Tom? Three oh eight. Oh eight. Any more? Okay. I'll summarize these. Three hundred. Amending resolution 004, adopting the 2021 holiday schedule. 301, accepting resignation of Connor Rostelli, effective October 23rd. Effective date 22nd, that's from DPW. 302, <coughs> emergency requiring approval of the director of the Division of Local Government Services due to Hurricane Ida, amended by allocation. 303, authorizing the contract with Ben Shipp and Recreation for the procurement and installation of playground equipment damaged by the storm in the amount of $156,000 in change. 304, Rejecting all bids and authorizing a rebid for cell plowing services for the upcoming season. 305, accepting a New Jersey Fireman's application for Andrew Vanderwall. 306, accepting a New Jersey Fireman's application for Carl Zenowich. 307, awarding the contract to Gabriel Truck Sales under source well pricing for 2022 MAC MD7. 309, approving the hiring of Patricia Hunt as Director of Communications. Kevin, the effective date on that appointment? It'll be Thursday. 11 4. 4. Okay. Point <coughs> three, 310, authorizing the sixth annual summer of a 5 k turkey truck on Thanksgiving Day. I believe that's at 9 a.m. At, at, at the uh, East End uh, fire, uh, fire Station on East Main Street. 311, supporting the New Jersey DOT Route 28 Bridge Street to Grove Street. Safety Improvement Project from milepost 3.35 to milepost 3.44. 312, authorizing the refund of an engineering escrow to Unity Bank, 12 Mountain Avenue, in the amount of 18.99 and 89 cents. And 313, approving final application payment number three for Deltec from Somerville Borough Hall, built in and cornice restoration and pause out of the project in the amount of $44,000 and change. And a motion on those resolutions. And so moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Jane Cavuda? Yes. Tom uh, Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Broom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Right, we have one for discussion. 308, authorizing the settlement 
with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to pay off a lien placed on all borrowing properties as a result of environmental activities undertaken on the farmer borough land. Motion to move. Second. Tom, you have a question? Yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to clarify this a bit. It uh, sounds very esoteric here. Uh, what happened is between uh, 1982 and 2007, the DEP uh, performed testing, environmental testing on the landfill property uh, and was supposed to be billing us and we did not get these bills and we built up 137,000 approximately dollars in, in back debt to the DEP for which they placed a lien on our property. They have agreed to remove the lien at a cost of 30000 So this is basically uh, discounting us by, by over $100,000. So this is uh, a positive step, even though it may seem that, oh, well, uh, is charging us money. It is money that we did uh, legitimately owe to them for work that they did perform out of our. Any more comment questions? Can, can, I, I, get a, can I negotiate <laughs> that kind of reduction on my taxes? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I would. You were aware of your taxes, Mr. Yeah. Brady. We were not aware of this that until recently. Yeah, that's no excuse. I want to thank our finance committee for, for you know, straightening this mess out. Um, Roll call. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Jan Cavuda? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Vroom? Yes. Fred Wee? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Driver was the one who straightened it out. The Finance Committee simply sat there with his mouth open and said, How are we going to pay that money? We paid $10,000. Bills and vouchers, Dr. Brady. Okay, thank you. There were so many this weekend that I almost forgot to write it down, but I removed the payment of bills and vouchers in the amount of $935,462.26, and that's my motion. I'll second that. Council members Graham O'Brady? Yes. Jane Cavuda? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Roger Vroom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Right, before I ask for, for closure, I just want to commend the council for introducing the four land use ordinances tonight. Um, land use is, is, is pretty dry pretty technical, but it, it puts in place the, the blueprint for what the town will look like in the future, you know, how it will grow, and in, in, in the case of these particular ordinances, how it will grow safely. Um, we, we don't have a crystal ball, you know, a glimpse into the future for weather, but it, it's becoming increasingly obvious that weather patterns are changing. And to rebuild, which which we could do, we could get an application tomorrow for the existing garden apartment zone that conforms with everything that we have on the books now. It's putting paint over rust. And any of you that have done that before knows what happened. And I'm not equivocating what happened a month, two months ago with rust, but this is a very positive step. And I, I look forward to, uh, the, you know, Media discussion of the planning board in 10 days and then bringing it back here for our deliberation in two weeks and putting in place um, a blueprint for um, current and future developers to know what we expect in terms of the quality of, of future projects that will not only enhance the livability of the town but will protect the, the very people that are living there. I have to keep, keep in mind that you know, redevelopment is nice. But redevelopment means bringing people and businesses into town. And we have a, a, a responsibility not just to get them here, but to make sure they're safe. So again, I commend you on the first step. I look forward to uh, a good discussion in the, in the, in the two weeks ahead. With that, Mr. Mitchell, I'll call for a motion to close. I move for adjournment. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you in two weeks. Well, I know that there's a title on that. I wasn't arguing against it. No, no.